Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Amazing Scale Modeler Sunday Hangout. I am your host, Scratch and Jack. Amazing Sc Scale Modelers is a Google Plus and Facebook community of scale modelers reaching across all scale modeling genres and mediums and to encourage friendships from around the world. And today we hope you'll find it to be an important source of information about the hobby here. Uh, hear something new, hear about something new, and first see uh, see firsthand what the skill modeling existence is like. Uh, joining to me uh, today are some usual suspects of the hobby that I talk with and some new ones and doing all these things. And if you want to join us, the live chat, 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 the, <laughs> I hope that chat is alive. Uh, the live chat is open over, of course, you're over at the Facebook uh, of, of the uh, Google the YouTube channel, that's where it is at. So I'm going to be popping over there momentarily to say hello. And in the meantime, I'm going to put my lower third down. I've been very rushed. I just got up from a whole afternoon nap just like 40 minutes ago. So I'm a little discombobulated. Uh, <laughs> so bring all your questions and comments. All are welcome today. And don't forget to like this channel, subscribe, and make suggestions and comments. Okay. Uh, yesterday on Across the Pond, uh, we were talking about stuff. We're going to continue on uh, with that, uh, namely the silicone molding. I hope Jim is ready to show us something. Well, and, something uh, to show, yeah. And then in the meantime, I'm going to uh, share between our guests uh, some uh, eye candy from the communities, both Facebook and Google Plus, uh, from our scale modelers, who, what they've been working on. And also, uh, one uh, we're going to talk a little more further about electronics. Maybe reading a little bit about how to read a um, schematic. Uh, that's always uh, fun to do, uh, so that you're not so intimidated when you see it. As I said yesterday, you're going to be working. You, you'd be probably working like maybe about three or four components. Uh, but long and short of it, uh, without any further ado, I also like to mention um, that I have been getting messages for the past 24 hours that people are posting on my Facebook page, which is terrific. And what they're posting on my timeline is pictures of their builds for our past year community builds. That would be the Batman build, the stunt and speed, things that go fast or perform to stunt the first time. Usually it's a vehicle and uh, also the street muscle and custom car build and the Star Wars build that we're finishing up next month, not too far away. And if you wanted to be part of a video that I will eventually be assembling, uh, you know, a slideshow video of our achievements for the past year. Uh, certainly, uh, post on the communities. I'll pick up on it. If you want to post on my Facebook or my Google, I don't know if you could do my Google Plus page, but you can do that too. Scratch and Jack. And over at Facebook, I'm Scra uh, Jack Matthew because uh, Facebook doesn't like fake names like Scratch and Jack to think I'm fake. Seriously, I can't more. I can't be any more real than I already am. Fake anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, post away. I'll pick up on it and uh, become famous or uh, almost famous uh, in the video I'll be making later. And also next year, we're going to have some more community builds, of course. And next week, in between the uh, broadcast weekends, like we do every other week, uh, between during the Thanksgiving holiday uh, weekend, uh, starting on Friday, that's the American Thanksgiving, if you all want to know. That Black Friday, we call Black Friday because everybody goes shopping the next day and retailers uh, operate in the red all year long until that day, Friday after Thanksgiving. That's called Black Friday. It's an accounting term. And uh, we're going to start a 48-hour hangout, and then we're going to try to count off 48 hours constantly online on no not on air <laughs> we can't do it oh, no, would want to watch a 48 hour hangout i don't know I but this is so, not on there <laughs> what's that <laughs> probably just as well it's not on air <laughs> uh, yeah probably oh, just as well because a lot of it's dead time <laughs> a lot of it is dead time it's just like last year i had to uh sleep and it was just uh my monitor in the background in the dark that uh, was glowing uh <laughs> But uh, we're going to keep the hangout open. Basically, it's an open house. Uh, Y'all are welcome uh, to join and build models and talk like the little old men and ladies. Some ladies, um, there are some ladies in our community, 
uh, oh, about anything, about being us, uh, about being people, about being modelers, and 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 share things, ask questions of each other, and it's it's been a lot of fun. This is the fifth year we're doing it, and wow. it's been it's been awesome the past four times. Uh, so Jim and I are going to really do our best to stay awake and not take six hours to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, if you're on the other side of the planet like an us, uh, it would be nice that you were here keeping us awake because it's your daytime during our nighttime. And if you're our uh, Perrin, uh, Perrin is there. So are you there, Heath, in Australia? Keith, I haven't seen Keith in a long time. Uh, I hope he's, he's doing fine. Uh, yeah, I hear that he is. Uh, I'm glad he is busy. That means he's on this side of the dirt. So, um, don't worry, Jack. I will keep you and Jim entertained as I always do. <laughs> entertained, more like a wait. <laughs> More like awake. Yeah, certainly you can do that. I mean, when you're drinking monster drinks, you're keeping us awake. So let's uh, moving forward. Let's talk to Heath. How you doing, Heath? <laughs> Hello, everybody from the land down under. Missed, it's you, under. Yes missed you yesterday, or missed oh, you? I know. Look, look, I know it's not the same without me there, but that's okay. That is true. I <laughs> I am gracing you with my presence today. Oh, well, gee, thank you, uh, Your Highness. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I was really, really tired on Saturday. I tried to keep my eyes open, like, with matchsticks, <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> but on to more pleasant things. I am looking forward to this year's 48-hour hangout. It's going to be a good one, one for the books. I'm just interested to see if we're going yeah, to be able to. One. I'm just wondering if we're going to be able to make it to the 48 hours, or we make it over the 48 hours like we've done in the past four years. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I have started building my uh, another. Yes, most people know I love my skylines. Ah, uh, yeah. That's something you can't buy here in the States. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, here is the engine. Oh, God. Why? Why? Who's that? What's that? Who's that? That was, that was me. It was somebody trying to call into, into the hangout, I think, but they were calling me instead. <sighs> uh, oh, well. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, here's the engine to the guy line. Oh, may oh, there you go. There you can see it. Hang on a bit. There we are. There's the engine already done. Uh, I've got to do some more work on that today. Um, I've also done some more work on my Lotus 99T. I've done some painting of parts. Plus, I did a bit. Plus, I had to do some paint work over the body because there was some uh, little marks that were now also colored black underneath the body which you do not see when you put the when you put the body onto the shell uh i actually managed to get that fixed oh you're down for it so big day <laughs> for me big day for me i got the down force all done so that's i made sure i did that first I made sure I did that first before anything else done because I knew that this one was going to take me a fair while to do. Mm. So that's – this is basically what I've been working on. Um, and I found an old model. I, I forgot I had this. I seriously forgot I had this. I found that in my stash. Ah, oh, yes. Mm. I did believe you showed that about two months ago. Yeah. And I'm going, I was just sitting here just this morning. I'm going, I wonder if I still got my Batmobile. Because I've got, box, I've got two boxes here where I've got some of my F1 model kits. And I've got a few Star Wars kits in there. And I opened up one of the boxes and there it was. Yeah. So, so that's going to be on a, uh, that's going to be a video build soon. So, yeah. 
And then on top of that, I've got to do, uh, I've got to take photos for Stunt and Speed, my Ferrari. And I've got to take pictures of my Batman, the other Batmobile that I built for uh, the Batman build. And then I've got to take some uh, photos of my Riviera to give to you, Jack, so you can put them into the, the little video that we got there. Yes. Yes. Yes, I expect to uh, see something from you, particularly. <laughs> yeah. I also, I also uh, printed out that. Ah, yes. Hmm. Yes, and, and if you're Randall, uh, you, you frame it. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I was actually sitting down, I was actually sitting down, I think it was last week sometime, and I was playing one of my many, many F1 games. Yeah. And I was looking at one of the steering wheels that were really one of my from one of my favorite races, the McLaren. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, if we're going to do a woodworking, if we're going to do a woodwork build, maybe I could build a Formula One, uh, well, not a uh, not a fully functional working steering wheel, but a static steering static F1 steering wheel. So I, to, to display, get the dimensions and everything like that, and and uh, build a scratch build, scratch build, a F1 steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm thinking of doing at this point after finish, finishing my kits that I'm working on here. So I'm thinking of actually, this, you heard it here first, folks. I'm actually going to try and build a... Not a fully functioning, but a static F1 wheel. Uh huh. F1 racing wheel. For, of course. For my yeah, that's uh, when you're eating your breakfast cereal, you'll have something to do. Is that what it is? Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, I eat my breakfast first. <laughs> then, I do the, then I do the. You do what your, uh, what your wife tells you then, huh? Oh my! Actually, my wife is actually most. I'm envious of most. I'm I'm the envy of most guys because, believe it or not, my wife actually does support me. I, there's I don't a lot get of support. I'm sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get how often I buy a new kit. She actually, I actually talked to her about this though. I actually talked oh, really? to her about. It. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. And basically, she's quite Spock. From uh, Star Trek Two, you oh, know the, the line where he says, "The line where he says to Kirk, um, giving up command of a starship is your first best destiny.'" And if uh -huh. you just, if you just reverse that and basically say, "You're gonna buy a model," and basically in layman's terms, what the wife's trying to say is, "You're gonna buy a model kit anyway." So what the hell are you trying? Why are you asking me for? <laughs> <laughs> of my wife and i love her dearly for us he well actually i got that for christmas from my two girls so uh -huh. Uh -huh. Re reason why i say two girls is because most of the people here know the little munchkin that comes in when uh we just have an off air when we have an off air hangout little munchkin who is getting into this by the way she's got her own first model kit up there she's i'm actually helping her build the enterprise c so, so, daddy and daughter are building an enterprise. Mm. I'm just wondering mm. if I can do it. I'm wondering if I can do it any justice like Jack did. Sorry. Cool. You'll like what I've built then. Oh, <laughs> well, I haven't really built the C yet. I, I've just been poking holes into a model uh, intermittently. <laughs> <That's been opportunity. laughs> yes, but, you know, we're trying to... I'm trying to uh, get a lot of kits done before the end of the year so I can start afresh. Uh -huh. I mean, I have done 11 builds this year so far, all of them cars. And I'm going, maybe I need to do something different. So mm -hmm. I'm, on the, I'm on the hunt to do something different. It could be a Starship. It could be a Falcon, a, Star a Millennium Falcon. It could be a Gundam. It could be a Gundam. <laughs> I will not be doing Gundam. Okay. No. No. Oh, Pat, Pat is saying, are you looking out? 
Uh, I've had a saying on the chat. Are you looking out for the su uh, tsunami warning? Hey. You, you're having a tsunami not. down there in Adelaide? No. <laughs> well, we don't have another one. Like, maybe, maybe it's time. Perfect. Maybe it's time he started to build a ship model. Yeah. I was thinking of that. I was I was actually thinking of that. Very, very, very good point there, Jim. I was I was thinking about doing a ship, but I don't, I don't know if I want to do a cruise liner or a battleship. Mm -hmm. Or a starship. <laughs> I got oh, plenty of them. Do I've a starship. Got plenty of them. I've got plenty of them. In fact, I've first, got that model. I've got <laughs> the first thing I've built in ten years. I'm quite proud of it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, I've actually got that kit up there with the with the Kelvin Universe Enterprise. So, so you could, you could do it properly. You're going to fill it full of lights, electronics. Um, you're not going to mess up the paint job like three times the way I did. <laughs> well, that paint, well, that paint job looks very looks very nice. It's very accurate. Very accurate. No, 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 no. Check this out. Check this out. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up now, but oh, oh dear. It's a bit messy. That could be fixed. That's yeah. not. That's not bad for the first oh, time in ten years. Um, that's not bad at all. Uh, for the, oh, considering uh, that's uh, since you've been ten. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk more about that uh, as you know. So uh, hang in there. Is that it, there, uh, Heath? That's it for me. Next. Oh, uh, let's see. You know something, guys. Uh, I have to I have to admit, if you're really uh, wanting to have uh, your uh, <laughs> wanting to have your um, photos uh, to appear on air, uh, this is what you do. It's a guarantee you'll get your photo on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why you might ask? Oh, no reason. I think, if you want, I think because that little photo card there. <laughs> yeah, if you want one of those, I will uh, be more than happy to uh, mail you the official one, and uh, just uh, drop <laughs> just drop uh, a line to me on your email at scratchandjackmodels at gmail dot com, and uh, I'll send you one snail mail. I'll I'll all postage paid by me. It's a freebie, and then you know, as modelers, we like free things. And uh, yeah, uh, this is this is Buck Moore's uh, build, and I'm trying to bring up the slideshow for him. But uh, as you, you guys uh, probably well know, what this is. So let's see if I can uh, access this. See, it's not coming up. Uh, well, you know what? Want to come up? Ah, here's a slideshow. So let's uh, cue in on it. And uh, damn, it's a good. Uh, that is good. Uh, Fuck, did a great job. Nice. Yeah, that the model's really lifelike. You you got the uh, the the animatronics down very well. Yeah. So we got uh, that one I just shared, and he's got some uh, gloss there. Oh, that's that's I, I didn't expect to see that. But he he um he, yeah he does have electronics there. Look at that, he's got a button on his base. Um, that is. Uh, he's had a whole series. Uh, this is on the Google Plus page. Uh, he's had a whole series of um, uh, work in progress pictures of this build. He's done a fantastic job. The amount of work that he's put into this and. They say pictures tell a story. Well, this certainly doesn't. Uh, he's done a lot of work. He's done an amazing oh, job. I mean, I like the different color greens he's got there. It looks like he's got a clear green and olive, olive green. It actually looks like it's from Star Trek Three. It actually yeah. looks like it's from Star Trek Three. And I noticed that uh, he's put in that modification right here. This is the torpedo tube that ends up in the front here. Uh, that's yeah. missing from the kit, and he's actually installed that. It's only a um, piece of circular styrene. You can even use a piece of sprue that's long enough to put in there uh, to to imitate that. Yeah, you'll find with that kit, you will find with that kit that it does miss the, um, the torpedo tube. Uh, but it's very clear, very, very clear in Star Trek Three when you have a look at the under section of it. 
it's, it can be seen as clear as day that that torpedo tube. So it's a bit disappointing that I don't know if that's the aim, the original pop, or it's the uh, round two, round two version of it. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, you, there you are. When you when you see the bird of prey like that in Star Trek Three, you can clearly see, clear as day, that that torpedo tube. And you wonder Buck's done, 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 done a fantastic job. You wonder how they missed that out, considering that the rest of the kit is fairly accurate. Yeah. It's actually one of those. Oh, now that's, classic, uh, that's the classic. That's the classic Star Trek Four view. Yeah. When the they cloak over the ship. That's now look at that. That's I'm sorry. That is the another classic bird of prey view that you see throughout the series. Um what was my thinking on this one? Uh Jesus. Oh, there it is. Um hmm. Back. That that is actually how it looks. That if you have a look at the end of Star Trek Three, that is exactly how it looks. That's exactly how the engine bay looks. I wonder it, if his uh, if his uh, flick uh, the engines flicker. Do you know, uh, Stephen, as to whether or not the uh, engines think, flicker? Because uh, sir, I think he he did this in, in his description. He did say that it was uh, flickering LEDs that he used in the engines. Okay. Mm. Okay. From from memory. I'm surprised Buck hasn't. Oh, sorry, Randall. Sorry. No, you're you're okay, Heath. Fire uh, uh, away. Most people I know who've done this kit have put little green LEDs or fiber optic at the end of the disruptor. At the end of the disruptors. I wonder if Buck's done that. I could see. I think he said he, he had LED or or sorry uh, fiber optics installed in it. But um, mm -hmm. some, something had gone wrong somewhere uh, after he'd sealed up the kit. Mm. I didn't know didn't yeah. what, what, what had gone wrong, but uh, to me it sounded as if the... Uh, what, that the, pattern there is not easy to do. That pattern there is not easy to do mm. at all. Uh, Actually, that was... Uh, sorry, Jack. What I li like uh, about this, too, and this is going to sound kind of silly, uh, is the base. Uh, it's a simple base. Uh, here's a here's a picture of it. I mean, you can embell embellish it, but really, uh, a base is just a just that uh, a base. And uh, a lot what a lot of the bases that come with the kit, they don't they don't spend very much time or money think, thinking it out. Uh, but something like this, I am fond of this kind of boxy design because it leaves you open to uh, go from here uh, to embellish it, maybe put, say, the uh, Klingon uh, emblem on it or a movie uh, title like uh, 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 Voyage Home, Star Trek Voyage Home, uh, blah, blah. You know, it just, I just think you can do a lot with something like this, thinking of it as a uh, plain canvas. So embellishment of this of this kind of a base uh, is actually uh, pretty doable, and it's really easy to make. Uh, you can even get it out of cigar boxes. You can find something that's already made like that. But if you're a little handy with the wood, I use. Uh, I actually use uh, pieces of wood to make a frame, and then cover it with plexiglass uh, a top. Because uh, and and if you do it that way, certainly you can even backlight it if it's a uh, plexiglass. So you can do a lot of interesting embellishments uh, for something so simple. Okay, uh, moving on forward. And uh, how you doing, uh, Jim? Uh, we're going to talk later about what you've been doing in greater detail. Okay. So what's going on? Well, I've been working on casting. I've got one. I got one piece in here now, waiting to dry. It won't be ready to to work off the frame until tomorrow morning, so it's going to sit here. I don't know how much you want me to discuss about it now until later, but because uh, if I go too much farther, I'll be going into everything that uh, I've done up to now. So that's about it as far as what I'm doing until I get into the full description of what the casting I've done. Yeah, sure. So maybe I should have picked you last, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that wasn't enough time to bring up a in between build. So how you doing, Randall? Oh, not too bad, Jack. Yourself? Fine. <laughs> um, been uh, haven't actually posted. Oh, much I'm recently. sorry. The, I'm sorry. Let me inter let me interrupt. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you whose uh, bird of prey that was. That was Buck Moore's. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized it was a nobody. No, it was Buck Moore who, who built it. So, uh, yeah, he posted on the Facebook community to the same pictures. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> uh, no, you're okay. You kind of got me on the hop here because I'm used. I'm normally used to being, you know, the, the last, you know, so, <laughs> you know that kind of somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, I haven't actually posted much. Uh, other than the uh, the stunt and speed build recently, um, but I have been doing the odd thing. Uh, I've been working here on uh, a couple of versions of essentially the the, uh, the the same airplane. Ah, I'm actually getting to the uh, the, the deckling stage here, but I'm actually having fun with the deckles. They don't want to conform. <laughs> Particularly the the uh, the roundels on the uh, left is left, right, right is left. Yeah, particularly that one there on mm -hmm. the uh, fuselage, because um, as you know, decals are printed flat, but the fuselage is like a compound curve. It curves really steeply in one direction and, and quite a, a shallow curve in the other. So I've been using practically everything in my arsenal trying to get the uh, the stuff to to stay down. I almost wish I'd just got masks and painted them on there. <laughs> Are they bear cats, Randall? Pardon? Are they? They're, uh, yeah, they're, sorry, yeah, they're, they're uh, uh, Grumman uh, Wildcats. Well, strictly oh, speaking, they're uh, General Motors Wildcats, which <laughs> were FM ones, FM twos, or something. Like that. But oh. um, yeah, both uh, fleet air arm subjects and uh, both flown by the same guy. A friend of mine who had passed away earlier this year, so I thought I would just you know commemorate him by uh, building two of his uh, two two of his airplanes. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah. Okay. It's a really good way to remember somebody. Yep. Uh, been working on this. Ah, uh, the V two rocket. You can just get the nice metallic sheen of it. Um, yeah, th those are wires hanging out of the back leg there. Uh, I, I went, I went down um, uh, Jay Barnes' route and, and put a, a little light. So it lights up the uh, the cockpit windows. But, uh, I haven't actually got it plugged in or anything yet. Yet, I haven't, I haven't even figured out what, what sort of base I'm going to put it on. <laughs> and. Uh, Uh, that's that. Oh, yeah, and I'm afraid I, I succumbed to uh, temptation and uh, got myself one of these. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I got one too. One of the little could, could yeah. I am I'm blown away by the detail on this thing. It is. It's great so for a small it is Amazing. Well, if you take a look at the perfect grain falcon that's just recently come out, mm. it's basically the smaller version of that one. <laughs> yep, that's the a new hope version of the falcon, uh, the one with um, just three under carriage. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the fun part, but building of it, the bandai kit. Where can you go yeah. wrong? Where could you go wrong? The fun part will be painting it, especially in something that size, without going overboard with the. Uh, I'm sorry, Chopper's fighting for life here. Uh, <laughs> uh, without going overboard and and, uh, and making it look like a like a black mess. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've been 
I don't know why, but I started working on a, a small scale V2. This is the, the first stage of the painting. Ah. Um, uh, I was going to do it in, uh, you know, the black and white roll pattern that the, uh, the, the prototypes had. Yeah. But I came across a picture of one that was uh, used in... NASA version? Yeah. Spoon Use it in uh, white sands testing, yeah. and uh, all of a sudden, I can't seem to find it. Green shark, I don't know how it's picture here. Something, sorry about this. <laughs> And while Randall is short waiting to show us his picture, <laughs> mm, <sure>. slightly <laughs> more interesting and, and different Ooh, colors. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yellow and black pattern. That's different. Yeah. Dude. Apart from all that, that's pretty much it for me. Sorry for a pretty, uh, a pretty short uh, show and tell. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, okay. Boy, that was easy. We're going through with this really quickly. Uh, not yeah. like yesterday. It took us two hours to get through you all. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, okay. Let's uh, take a look over at the uh, Google. Uh, not, uh, not the Google Plus uh, community. Uh, let's see here. This is going to be Facebook. Gosh, I wish my com computer would be a little faster. Now, I, okay, Brian Kirby. Yes, Brian Kirby and a Chevy. Looks like a Chevy from the 30s. Uh, here we are. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah, this right. is actually quite nice. I like the way he uh, photographs because he does this a, a lot. Uh, he has a focal point where it's focused and then some parts of the picture. It gives it some feel of uh, dimension, of uh, size, dimension. I don't know. It makes it look real. makes it look big. So we like his uh, photographic uh, ability as well. Like the, like oh, the opposite bad. of a tilt shift. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, that looks... Well, cool. It looks like uh, one of those custom things. Yeah. Uh, that you see, uh, this will be perfect for the custom build. It even has an operating, you know, back door there. Wow. The engines look to be pretty obscure. Oh, look at that engine. Hmm. What was that, Randall? I so the back door hinges look to be pretty much in scale, too. Yeah. Yeah, really that's uh, working, working hinges. They seem to be a wee bit on the large side. Yeah, yeah, it kind of looks that way, doesn't it? He did a good job. Uh, he's got it all wired up. So uh, I guess Stephen, you 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 have to kind of. Uh, kind of follow up on that one. <laughs> uh, so what's up? Uh, show us your model since you were ten, and talk oh. about it. Let, let hey, us know right. what you. Yes. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> right. Um, Hello. So th this has a bit of a weird story to it, right? I'm not going to go into too much of the backstory, but um, I started. I, I bought this kit back in March um, when I I started going out with a lady. Um, the convention that we met at basically is when I bought this model. Started building it the first month that she moved in, and then when the relationship kind of fell apart and she moved because I'm from Ireland by the way, so she moved back to the UK, and I kind of thought, well, I started doing that model, kind of put it by the wayside, 
Um, I'll start doing it again as like a weird closure to everything. So it's been a bit of a weird build, but for the past, I've done bits and pieces the past few weekends for the past couple of months. Um, it's not perfect. This is the first model of anything that I've built since I was like 10, as I keep saying. Um, but I think I did an okay job. It's one of the more recent Ravel kits of the original Enterprise. Um, I messed up the paint job a little bit. Um, actually, there's okay. one or two pieces of it that I need to finish. Um, there's a, just a couple of like minor uh, decals that still need to be put on. But uh, I'm quite proud of it. Like I think I did an okay job. The only thing is, is I find that I think this might be a common problem with a lot of Star Trek models. The the nacelle sag. The sag, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, they um, take look like they, the old they, lady. Huh? They take what? Sorry. Makes her like makes her look like an old lady, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I've kind of I've kind of gotten the uh, what would you call it the the buzz again? I guess. Um, the book. The book. The, the what? The building bug. The building bug. The That's it. Yes. yes. So I actually have other models that are. The virus. The bug. As soon as I put the last couple oh, of decals on that Enterprise, um, I've got two other models that I want to build. Um, I got one of these 10 years ago. Oh, hold on. Oh, good God. An original mm -hmm. Pop Voyager. <laughs> yeah. An original Pop Voyager. That is so old. Yeah. Um, it was sitting in a shop for years, like not not nobody touched it. Um, I bought it about, uh, I want to say maybe ten years ago. Um, about five years ago, I started doing some parts, so some of it's built. Looking good, though. It's looking it, that's looking real good. It's only got a, a base coat of paint on it at the minute, and then this as well. This isn't put together, but some bits of it are. So uh, yeah, that's, the, the kind rest... of weird, that's, that's kind of a weird kit, though. Uh, that's the Ravel. Uh, that's the uh, MPC kit, is it, or is it the Ravel kit? Ravel. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, it was not, like limited edition thing. Mm. Ah, with the best. Yeah. The one of twenty thousand. It says on the box. Yeah. And then I've got this one oh, that I got recently. Are... What was that? Oh, yes. I'm saying, oh, hello, here we go. It's a runabout. One more. <laughs> yep. Uh, you oh, know what, no Stephen? If, if it uh, grabs your fancy, the runabout is a perfect kit to build interiors. All right. It's perfect to build interiors. If you're, if you want to learn, uh, if you want to do some scratch building, that would be the model to get really into it because that is the closest I think you'll get to HO HO scale uh, building, okay. um, and you could you could certainly make it out of wood or styrene, however you'd like, and put, build an interior, get some reference pictures, and you can always do that. I'm just suggesting that that if you are wanting to scratch build on a model and not alter the kit, that would be the kit to do scratch building on, do an interior. I'm going to try get down building properly what they've given me first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an easy kit. No, that's actually a very easy kit. It's a level two. I mean, it is a level. I think it's a level two. It's a pretty it's, easy kit. It's and good it's, that it's an easy kit. Good kit to light as well. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> you're getting back into uh, into everything. Uh, and, yeah, you're, you're picking the good ones, actually, to, to start with. So kind of a funny story behind that one. About two years ago, um, a friend of mine had actually, she had one for sale. Um, she had done the full lighting kit for it and everything. Um, and I was going to drop some money on it at a convention. I decided at the last minute not to. And then she ended up selling it. So I was like, oh, I was real bummed out about it. And I was like, right, well, I haven't touched this in years. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd only mess it up if I tried. And I'd love like a lighting kit to be done. So she was all ready to like do it for me and then it just kind of never happened and it's been sitting there for the past two years but now i'm thinking i've taught myself to solder recently so i'm sure doing a lighting kit for it wouldn't be too hard not mm. really not with that one not really i'm not really. give it a go um yeah i mean 
that's another thing that you you can dive yourself into. You can uh, spend a whole year building a kit. And, uh, you know, George, uh, I said George, no, it's not George, it's Bill that said, uh, yeah, he was talking about the enterprise. Uh, he was saying, ah, you got to finish. I can't finish an enterprise. Something goes wrong every single time when I do an enterprise. It goes wrong. Well, Something uh, goes wrong. I can't do it. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me show you something that's really wrong on my enterprise. I didn't want to admit it, but I'll show you. You see it? Uh, oh! Yeah. Yeah. What do you nice. see? I don't see it. So the, the bit where the... <laughs> it's like a, the, the saddle that goes over the where the uh, the, the nacelle island, yeah. the, yeah. the hearing hole. Mm -hmm. I had to file that down a lot actually, um, because it didn't really fit in the way it was supposed to. Um, and the so originally when I put it all together, I kind of thought, oh, cello tape seems to be holding this together. That'll be fine. Um, left overnight, it dried, came back, and the nacelles were like this. Mm -hmm. And I was mm. like, oh, so I had to like, I had to like pry it apart, um, redo it. And it just, it, it, it hasn't looked, this, it was all nice. It was flush and the paint looked great and everything. And now it's all messed up. But uh, freezer, freezer model, and then take it apart. Freeze. Okay. Seriously, put it in a freezer, put it in a freezer. If it's uh, well below freezing in there and let it sit there for maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes and then, and, and try to work it apart and that will work. It'll break the glue uh, joint. Yeah. Yes, it will. That's the weakest okay. part. And whenever you freeze it, the contraction of the plastic is at a different rate than the joint part. And that's why it's easier to pull apart. If you use a, a lot of glue, like um, some modelers do and you shouldn't, if you use a lot of glue, that would be harder to do. But if you use the appropriate amount of glue, you can pull it apart. You got to freeze it first, though. Well, keep that in mind for when I mess up Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and, and get involved with uh, get get involved with someone who would accept a model or two in a freezer every now and again. You know. <laughs> oh, I, I live I live alone. It's the perfect setup. Yeah. <laughs> well, honey, that's just my build in the freezer. There, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I will always Don't say it. this Don't in the model it. world. In the model world, there's no such thing as perfection. There's always something wrong. Some part doesn't fit right, and then you just want to throw it. Yeah. You just want to throw it and start all get another kit and start all over again. That's a maxim that I've lived by. Even Imagine. though you might be the only one that can see it, but it's there. Yeah. Can I ask you guys for a quick tip? Sure. Yep. All right. How do I stop this from happening? Uh, where is she? You see the way there's a bit of like separation here? Oh, the, uh, that's where the hole. Uh, the hole joints. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Putty. Yeah. Putty and sanding. Yeah. And then priming again to see where. Uh, yeah. Get where some. Uh, you have to. Yeah, yeah. Normally, yeah, you would get some putty, like some. Uh, Spot putty, get okay. Automotive supply, and uh, you work yeah. that into the joint. Ah, I should have done that before I painted it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can <laughs> you could use the uh, spot the putty uh, automotive stuff, and there's also something else you've got. You can try, but you mm -hmm. have to be very careful with because I went overboard on doing it. Uh, get sprue and some acetone. And make a pasty because once it melts, once the styrene melts, it gets kind of pasty and gooey. If you're doing tiny little, you know, spots like that, that's fine. Just don't, if you're if you're getting past maybe two millimeters of it on that, it'll melt the styrene around it and really do crazy stuff. Uh, you can also if you're doing you can also use like that. that hmm. The Mr. Hobby dissolve putty. You can use that too. Yeah, would you? Yeah. I, I only recently yeah. posted on the face group um, page a couple of photos of that model. If you guys wouldn't mind sending me a message or something with a couple of links to products, that'd be great. Thank you. Yep. Oh yep. sure. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Thanks guys. Bond, Bondo Bondo is pretty popular. <laughs> I, I was just showing you. 
Well, it's a good thing you're single because it'll gas you out of your uh, uh, of your uh, pad, you know, out of your apartment. So, Bumbo <laughs> is actually quite hard to get over this side of the pond. I was just going to ask you that. I, I assume you're from up north somewhere. Yeah, uh, Port Stewart, North Coast. I'm sure, I'm sure you can guess where I'm from. <laughs> Dublin. I'm from right here, Dublin. Yeah. How'd you guess? <laughs> Well, he actually sounds like you sound like you're from New England, as far as I'm concerned. But that's that's. Sound like I come from Boston, Boston. Boston. We drive a car to the water. Hey, hey, what's So. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly you can ask anybody on uh, the community, certainly will oblige. Um, I don't know what will be available in the UK or in Ireland, uh, but there, there is, there, um, I'll, I'll message you, there is something in a modeling world you can get. I don't use it very often, but uh, but the ultimately, uh, the idea about mounting styrene actually came from model man Tom, because he was working on a glow-in-the-dark enterprise, and he's saying, oh, the sprues are great because if you have a seam, you can't use any putty because because he was lighting it from the inside. And putty yeah. would show up because it's opaque. Yeah. Uh, so he says, oh, you just get a little bit of spruce, stick it into the uh, acetone, close it up and let it melt, and you can use that. And, and you got it the will same be plastic. Out. Yeah, you got the identical plastic. It's the same plastic. And I went over famously, if you use it sparingly and carefully, uh, that technique works rather well. And That's there was one thing I did. I filled a cavity up with all kinds of stuff, and uh, I used too much of it. It melted the stand. It was a stand for the DS9 model. I think Jim knows what I'm talking about. That yeah. was like a little too much. It melted the plastic that went in. It was fine into. the night before, but by morning, it had penetrated through the stand. <laughs> it yeah, I don't even know where that is. I think I might have put it away, but long and <laughs> short of it, it, it just did kind of goofy stuff. Anyway, is that it? Uh, is that it, Stephen? That's, yeah. Thanks for having me. Well you're, oh, well, you're no longer a hangout virgin. You are now a seasoned veteran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the rest so, of us. Uh, one of us. One of us. You know, it's been a while since I've lost my virginity, but yeah, okay. <laughs> you'll find, find Stephen, we're a bit like the Borg. There will be a summer. One of us. 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 <laughs> Ah. So Phil wanted to make fun of me and my prowess of building the enterprise. I thought I'll be criticizing him on his latest. <laughs> uh, so here is his X-wing. He had a mast up uh, yesterday during the uh, during the cross the pond. He's actually on the live chat right now. And uh, oh, just a back uh, back uh, back uh, back uh, back. Let's go back a little bit. Uh, to me, extra thin, less harsh than acetone. That's what uh, Phil says you can use. To me, an extra thin to melt your styrene. Uh, uh, acetone is pretty harsh. Yeah, that's pretty harsh stuff. And uh, George says Napa for 6390 spot putty. I don't know, George, if they can get that into the uh, in the UK. Uh, Bondo, they can't get uh, George. Uh, uh, resistance is futile. Yes, uh, Phil, it is, of course. Uh, now I can't resist and just critique your work. <laughs> he had this all uh, masked up uh, for the paint stripes. What do you guys think? That's nice. Yeah. Oh, he's doing red three. He's doing red to ship. Yeah. Did he used oh, the, the hairspray technique for the, uh, the, for the, the, chip, or the chipping of the paint work, didn't he? I think he's doing a mix. <laughs> yeah. He's doing hairspray in some manual, I think, because he was having salt. trouble with the hairspray. Salt or sugar. That's yeah, what I'll say the next salt. time I mess up one of my models. It's battle damage. Yeah. Yes, now you're getting it. Put both the Enterprise oh, suffered oh, from that during this uh, five-year mission. <laughs> oh, yeah. If it's a car, it could be a junkyard. There's actually a guy on the Facebook community who specializes in junkyard builds. Yeah. Uh, oh, but cool. that's, you got to make it look like it's purposeful, you know? I mean, <laughs> that's a, altogether different, but on ships, you can make it battle damage. Yep. Ah. Nice. 
you know, the stand on this kid is stupid. So I don't even know why they even bother it putting it. It's stupid. It is. But this is a kit that's a pretty accurate kit. It's uh, large and it's fun to build. And uh, you have to build a stand for it. There's no excuse for this uh, stand that they give you. So that's a little overexposed there, Phil. I think the original it's stand, they were trying to uh, replicate an explosion or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, George says it's uh, happy little accidents that work too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't call them mistakes, just just happy little accidents. That's that's what Bob Ross Thank says. You, Bob yeah. Ross. Yeah. Thank you, man. There's no such thing as mistakes. Uh, oh, if, you, if you like so Bob Phil Ross, by the way, you should check it out. Uh, Phil is. Uh, uh, it was taken in a hurry. Okay, you got the overexposed uh, uh, comment. Uh, what uh, did you get past the uh, the hairspray? Because you said the hairspray made your uh, workshop smell pretty. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So comment, Phil, please. Uh, what did you use to get that nice, uh, varied uh, look there on your red and the yellow, for that matter? That's a red going on, really nice. Oh, it's actually uh, Big's ship there, Heath. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, Biggs. Sorry, sorry. Oh, God. I should, I'm such a Star Wars now. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take you out to the courtyard later and uh, beat you with a wet noodle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he used... Uh, fuck you with my bloody cup. He used Vallejo chipping medium on the reds. Heath. Yo. Be grateful it's only a wet noodle. He he uh, he used one that was still in the tin on me. <laughs> <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> All right, it just brings up. I'll, I'll get to you, David. Uh, just hang on in there. Uh, and uh, how you doing, Wayne? I'm doing fine. I'm finishing work, and we've got Justice League on, so we do. So we're okay. Yeah, we call Wayne the disembodied modeler because sometimes you see hands but don't see him. <laughs> <laughs> I think Wayne's got the clocking device on again. I, I think Wayne's related to the thing from the Adams, Adams family. Yeah. <laughs> right. Two things. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Right, as you can see on my bench, I've got another tank. Hey, you got another one. Mm -hmm. um, but last week was the uh, big mall show at Telford, so I did. I have posted pictures. And if I can find my mouse, I could do a quick screen share. Yeah, Phil gave us some uh, views of Telford, and uh, yeah, share, please, absolutely. Uh, porn, I mean eye candy. <laughs> if, you, if you were at that show actually in uh, Telford, would you know the name David Lindbergh at all? Um, there's quite a few people there. I can't remember every. Unfortunately, quite a few people did come and say hello. Ah, no worries. <laughs> uh, can you see that at all? Don't uh, see a share yet. Sing your bench still. Uh, can you see oh, there that? we go. There we are. There we go. Oh! Be a star, yeah. That is a um, that is a scratch build. Whoa! What? Oh. Wow! Oh my god! Yeah, he's a member oh, of our yes. uh, build. Oh my god! He's he's the guy who built that giant uh, Battlestar Galactica mod. Oh yes. And the only other, Ooh, yes. and the only other, yes, the, I heard him. Yes, I've seen that. Oh my god! Scratch yeah, also, build. That's huge. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Last year he bought the whole ragtag fleet. He builds the um, Battlestar ragtag fleet from scratch, or everything is scratch built. Good God, that huge! I can't believe that. Oh, is this the guy? Um, I can't remember his first name. Is it something Cockings? Yeah, that's it. it Phil Cockins. That's the yeah, one. He's, yeah, yeah. He's um, he comes to my group at Lincoln. He's uh, does basically goes around the shows and gets takes his ragtag fleet, 
Yeah, he's a Please really, friend. really nice guy. Yeah. Actually, speaking of all things big, has anybody seen the photos of the 1650 scale or the studio scale Enterprise D? Yeah. Uh, is this a new one or the original? Uh, this is a new model kit that they've come out with. Dual and resin. Studio scale Enterprise D model kit. I met the original about 10 years ago. Yeah. The D in resin? It's in resin. That'll, that'll be heavy. <laughs> yeah. well, let's put it this way. It's eight foot long. <clears throat> Where would you keep way. it? Where are you going to put it? <laughs> I might get it, I might get it to fit in this room, but I would never be able to get it back out again. You need yeah, a new you need a new house. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite a collection of carriers. A guy did. This is where I live. This is where my enterprise lives next door. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. I just thought I'd yeah mention all this small uh groups work. Oh, look at that Williams F1 there. Very, very nice. Yeah, we've got a nice selection of um, genres there. We've got sci-fi aircraft, tanks, motorbikes, cars. Um, tornado. Uh, yeah. That orange tornado has every um, mathematical formula for flight on it. <laughs> All the um, equations for it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Nirvana to me. That is Nirvana to me. Uh, I like the two okay. seats. That is quite a collection of carriers there. Universal carriers, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the, that's the um, neighboring group, the Newark group, which we have um, a joint show with. That's a lot of tanks. Oh, look at some of these beauties. Zero. Yeah, is, it, is, it... is that a tomahawk in the background? Up there in the foreground? Is that a... Uh, I don't know. I just... I just went around taking pictures. I'm a bit... Uh, aware, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went drinking that the night before. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 won't be, yeah, you won't be a, a good Brit if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> this was oh, in the, in the international center, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's um, it was uh, it's a nice wet rainy day. Not good Brits. Oh, God. I don't know about everybody else, but you cut out on me there when you were speaking. I didn't actually hear what you said. Uh, I don't know. It's just this, the Wi-Fi signal jumps up, up and down during oh, the night. Wow. Phil, Phil just said on the live chat that Telford is considered the biggest in the world. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a lot uh, of styro. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of... There's a lot of um, it's something for everybody. It's not just all tanks, all planes, and all sci-fi, but it's a lot nice mixture of all everything. You know? I like the add-add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, that that uh, looks very familiar, Randall. Uh, yeah, Randall. <laughs> not mine. Yeah, that's right. That's you, Randall, isn't it? Who's that, the who's the one? Isn't mine though. No. Who's the chick? <laughs> Looks like Red Sonia. And there's yeah. that uh, buggy thing in the back, too. Go back to the oh, other, uh, go back one. Go back Star one. Starbug. Oh, no. Starbug. Star Star yeah. 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 Uh, Lou, Lou uh, DeMasso uh, yeah. uh, built that just recently. Yeah. Are there any kits of Red Dwarf, actually? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Phil says more plastic than Hollywood. That's actually <laughs> saying something, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of garage kits of uh, Red Dwarf. And uh, I think um, I haven't seen him. Carlin, Carlin was working on a, a red dwarf kit at one stage. I don't know what's happened yeah. to that. Carlin got 
the uh, micro machines one. He, yeah, his red dwarf was actually micro pretty machines big. one. His yeah, his, his red dwarf was pretty and that big. Was scratch uh, built too. Yeah, a scratch built. I think it was uh, about, uh, I think maybe 24, 30 inches. But then again, he's in the middle of a move. He's moving to Hong Kong. Damn no, him. Wow. Close to the center of uh, model kit world. Yeah. <laughs> There's a nice bus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. It's more aircraft. Unfortunately, I didn't, nice. do any, I didn't do any of the... Um, competition area unfortunately North thunderbirds is really came back look at this thunderbirds is all it seems like it's very well represented yeah three i think four. you could say thunderbirds three, are go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and going um, and going and going right and george says the uh, bus he right. likes the bus uh oh look at that that's a half a circle the, the way you guys display uh, models is very well appreciated uh it's very nice the way it's done i like it i like it a lot well there's a there's a large group of international displays as well so there's a lot of people from china um a lot from europe as well came over <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're, saying, you're saying, Jack, about the way they display these things. There's also in, in the IPMS competitions uh, best uh, best club stand. So they're, they're they're trying to they're trying to out to each other in that respect as well. Yeah. I'll say there's um, loads there's loads of pictures. Yeah, landing craft. Ah, yes. Oh, very nice. Ah, oh. nice oh, mm -hmm. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with a good looking phantom. Nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I've got a model of a phantom, eh? Right here. You know what? I think my eye doctor is saying if I keep watching this, I'm going to uh, go blind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I'll go. That's it. Right. Jack, go blind, folks. <laughs> right, um, I'll stop sharing and go for what I bought. I, I open my. Well, oh, please continue. Just. Whew. Right, uh, well, that came through the post before I came. It's one of my latest purchases of the Gundam. Oh, get another one. Yeah, it's the um, Heavy Arms Custom. You've got Gundam there, what? Well then. Are yeah, you, are I, you building Gundam now? Yeah, I blame Mark. <laughs> no it's, but, it's Mark through Mark yeah, through. I blame Mark that well, that's right. Blame Mark. Blame. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did get a blame sci-fi Mark. kit. The Terminator ah. uh, Hunter Killer Drone. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> and and I am going to light this when I get the kit. When I get the lighting kit. Oh. Oh. Yeah. But there's a lighting kit and a soundboard as well. So I may get the one with the soundboard as well. So the next topic may be useful for me. As much as I'd like to get the perfect grade Millennium Falcon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did. I had to get some uh, with tank tracks on. So I've got the um, M60. M60 A1 with the um, extra explosive reactive armor. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Oh, I got something that with rotor, a rotor on it. I got a helicopter. Ah. Uh, oh, the Cobra. Super Cobra. Whiskey. There's, there's uh, a very important question that I need to ask. Do you have any money left the, to uh, eat for the rest of the week? Oh, he doesn't oh, need no. to eat. <laughs> Oh, you got uh, you got yourself an egg ship, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, yes, what, yes. I do, what I do Breathing. is I actually stay all even... during the summer because I work yeah. I work all a ton of hours during the uh, school holidays, so I right. need like 60, 70 hours a week nearly. So I just put a set of money aside for the hotel, the train fare, the bail money. 
your bail money. I'd spend all the money and then be like, oh, yeah, eating is a thing. I, I should, I should. Yeah. Well, you know, that. I don't know. Here in the states, uh, it's called uh, Kraft mac and cheese and ramen noodles. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did pick up a conversion kit for um, something later on. It's the Panther Cologne anti-aircraft turret. Ah. It's a, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, going, um, one second, Panther. I want a Panzer Fork chassis. <clears throat> no, Panther. It's a Panther chassis. It's a 100%. And it's from a company called Accurate Armor. Uh -huh. And um, they do quite a lot of conversion kits, but the um, if you want a certain one, you have to pre-order it now. Because uh -huh. they're not stocking a lot of them. Oh, I've got a couple of paint sets. I've uh, got the uh, Ammo MIG Mech and Robots colour set, which will be useful for my Gundam kits in the future. I've got my standard 1945 German late war colours. Uh, I've got the... Uh, Weathering set from uh, Max as well from Ammo Mig. Mm. And I've got a desert style diorama base. Oh, oh sweet. Great North Road. Nice. Uh, and this is uh, made out of dental plaster, not the uh, standard plaster of Paris. So it's a bit more t durable. Most likely to crumble. Yeah, and, and yeah, it didn't break because I dropped it and it didn't break. So, <laughs> but also uh, as a side project, I am started one of my one of my free Abram tanks I've got in my stash. Hmm. Oh. So this is the uh, Tamiya uh, Abrams Tusker. Oh. That's the one with all the extra. Uh, machine gun on it and all the extra reactive armor. So I got the one from Ming and I got another uh, Abrams with the mine plow on as well to build. Bye, Heath. Yeah, really, it's one of So that's basically about it. I've done this. So I spent some money, took a lot of pictures, got a hangover. But you still have you still have money for groceries. Yeah, uh, no, because what I did was um. And I said no. Say, no, I I I, I was sensible uh, spending wise, so I just saved up my money before, and so it went there about three four hundred quid saved up before I left. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but that also covers the um, traveling expenses and. I covered the travel expenses, food, beer money. Oh. Uh, you just so... get like a big bottle of whiskey and just put it into canisters and sneak it into the show. That's what I usually do. There you oh, go. No, I... we do. Um, <laughs> they did have they did have um, a bar, but it's like um, cost you an arm and leg if you know what I mean. The, um... Sure. So you go up to the bar. You have your canister in your inside pocket. You go up to the bar. Um, you you just ask for like a bottle of Pepsi or whatever. You drink a quarter of it and then you put the whiskey in, shake it around, done. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to take a whiskey, bottle of whiskey with me, but because um, they don't they don't they're not bothered about uh, people drinking because every table I went every uh, stand they had like a bottle of uh, brandy or whiskey. The Italians had bottles and bottles and bottles of wine <laughs> on the table behind them. Well, you, you know, uh, I, uh, I I used to uh, uh, date someone who was really into college football. And on college football games, there's no alcohol served because uh, drinking age here in the States is 21. Yeah. And so what we do is we invested in, I think it was quart size 
Ziploc bags. Oh. And we would pack up uh, 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 Captain Morgan spice rum <laughs> in those things and then stick it down our pants. And you know what? Alcohol can be pretty cold. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then uh, hey, you know what? Uh, we're actually we're teaching people how to do contraband here. I think we should stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can drink cheaply if you find a way. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this kit, this um, shift and tank, I'm working on the kits. Just changing the subject, so YouTube don't uh, yell at us or something. <laughs> Uh, but the kit itself is not a bad kit. It's a 1972 kit. Um, it's gone together quite well. There's no issues about the fit, and apart from that, it's okay. Uh, I took a bit of. I went a bit um, <laughs> free hand with the cu with the camera and everything. Are we safe? <laughs> so, yeah. But that's about it. It's another one for the competition this December. It's a nice paint job, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used the. Um, I just uh, used normal blue tack and the uh, and the airbrush that was on a low psi. The language weren't so. so... <clears throat> Oh, I just remembered. My ex left a, an airbrushing kit here. Nice. Mm, I just remembered that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think it's so broken, it's though. I need to fix it. It's a, uh, a relationship good. that didn't go to waste. <laughs> no, I got an airbrushing kit. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. Broken heart airbrushing kit. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the live chat is cracking me up. So if you just see me laughing for no reason, it's because I'm watching the, uh, the live chat. These guys are fun. It's like a whole different world over there. <laughs> yeah. No, um, what they had, well, the, um, the, the, sh the Telford show, they've actually added something new to encourage the younger models, model makers to, 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 Get more children involved in the, in the uh, model hobby. They do the uh, they let them do their own display of the children's models. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're trying to, and, which was really cool. They got um, some really talented models in the future. By the looks of it, mm. I could have done with something like that years ago. I probably wouldn't have given up after I was yeah. like ten years old. Uh, the one thing I didn't check on Google Max, uh, Ma uh, Max, uh, Google Maps is where Telford is. Uh, what's the biggest city that I would know that's neck near? It's about Birmingham. an hour outside Birmingham. Yeah, I don't know where Birmingham is. Oh. <laughs> it's in uh, the UK. Like the UK. Center, it's north, south, uh, mainland it is UK. In England. It is in England. It's in England. In England. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's in the, it's in the West Midlands. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I know where Birmingham is. Okay, you know, maybe, maybe I should save up my drinking money and uh, take a trip out there uh, during uh, showtime, huh? What do you think? Yeah, there's an airport and there's uh, Birmingham International so. International Airport, or there's um, oh, make it a from... make it a two weekend yeah. visit all your asses and uh, and uh, share a pint with y'all. That's my you whole idea. Going. Yeah. That's need the only reason it, I go to England is share a pint with you all. You need to make a pit stop in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Randall said the, yeah, he may try. And get this. Tour, yeah. Randall's on about trying to get the, the, to come to Telford one year. Yep, I, I have to get there. Yeah. I had I had plans to go there this year, but it, it fell through. But uh, definitely next year, I've got to get there. Yeah. Well. It's, yeah, and uh, Christina can show me all the uh, Beatles uh, shops in uh, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. She hates them. Um, she hates them. <laughs> apart from that, um, I'll say I did. I did do um, 
a little video which I posted on the Facebook on the um, Google Plus page, and I've had some people watch it and say it's all right. All it's right. A short video. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do a follow-up video when I've finished off. I'm going to switch all, talk about the kit and a bit about the actual tank itself. Mm-hmm. The banks. But in fact, one thing is this tank had the real tank had a real bad engine at the beginning of its life it had a multi-fueled engine which broke down constantly because uh, it was rubbish to tell you the truth a lot of the countries mm-hmm. dropped the multi-fueled engine but for some reason britain stuck with it mm-hmm. Stubborn that way. As an yeah. as an Irishman, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, we will stay. We'll stand out in the pouring rain, waiting waiting for a bus, and still complain about it when it comes. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, we do that too. Yeah. Right, that's all me done. I've got. That's that's all you. Okay. Yeah. Don't, sorry. Don't. Sorry that we're we're just cracking up here. This this live feed is my is going to be the bane of my existence. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I mean, thank you for sharing. And I, I and I think I, the comment I would make about your presentations, Wayne, is uh, what I look forward to is what you actually buy. Uh, that's uh, kind of I don't know. I, that doesn't sound like uh, uh, a compliment, but no, you you find. I'm just amazed uh, of your model um, knowledge and prowess when it comes to you know buying these kits, and you just come up with the most interesting kits uh, when you go on your shopping spree. Well, um, um, sometimes it's like I go with what I um, what I want to buy, like a shopping list or something which I haven't got, or but then I see, I, well that kits. Ten pounds cheaper here than it is online. Also, I don't have to pay posters and packaging for the same kit, so I'm saying, sure. okay. so I'll get the kit while I'm there. Hmm. I actually believe it or not that that enterprise model that I that I just built, I actually bought that in Telford. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was it, I wasn't uh, at the. Sorry. You weren't. Uh, no, I was just saying. Was you at this show or was you at last year's show? No, um, I was actually at a convention called FCD Out of the Ashes. It was on in uh, March or April. Ah. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know about that because uh, March and April is a bit of a no-go for me for holidays. It wasn't specifically a model show. It was more like um, yeah. just generic kind of sci-fi and convention thing. But I, yeah. I did the usual thing of waiting until the last hour of the very last day to run around and grab all the bargains and the guy wanted 30 pounds for that and i was like oh, i'll give you 20 and he was like yeah whatever just take it yeah <laughs> that's the end that's what happened with me last year when i bought my Battlestar galactic kit from uh, tank i got that from tank fest by the way so <laughs> which is fun uh the box the guy was selling it for about 16 pounds but because the box was crushed in one side he said i'll let you have the the model for 12 pounds nice mm. I'd have bargained them down to ten. A, uh, I gave him twelve quid. I still had a, I still had enough for a pint, so not complaining. <laughs> you got your priorities straight, anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the only the only drawback about t- uh, tank first is you've got a walk. It's about fifteen minutes away from the railway station, mm. and you got to walk, and there's no toilets on the way back. <laughs> I know it. You've got you've got that you've got that massive bridge over the motorway as well. I know it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's um. Ah, it's, it was it was good. We had um. We don't know what's happened this second day. We sounded like somebody having a fight or a spit or something. There was a lot of screaming and shouting. I thought somebody had touched somebody's moles then. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I was talking to um, someone who else was there. They said, "Oh, the mate, somebody may have been stabbed." At the show. Yeah. My goodness. 
Wait, so, sorry, it wasn't just, in, it was actually at the show itself? Yeah, actually inside the actual building. It's, um, it was near the, t mm. there was near the Tamiya stand, Tamiya stand. There's some screaming shouts and some on the floor. I don't know if they're having uh, some sort of bit or something. And there was ambulance there, there was people all around. And uh, I don't, I don't know which, exactly what happened, but my table was that's at the. Well, it's like it was like that on the um, it's like the diagonal from the incident. Ooh. You know so, what that was, don't you? That 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 was the wife of somebody who's just like, I'm just gonna buy one more. Just gonna buy one more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually, I actually did meet some. I actually did meet somebody from the community from our community there yeah. no kidding uh, oh cool uh name of lee chambers he's in our community and uh came over said hello i because i messaged him i posted on so and going to telford i said if anybody's going to telford come over say hello mm -hmm. i'll be the one so that's what happened uh, i met ted for me models mm -hmm. He does a live show on YouTube every Monday nights. Mm -hmm. So if you get if if you want something to watch, they do they talk all about, about modeling products, mm -hmm. how to get there. Uh, mm -hmm. Ted and his partner does all the um, gun for stuff as well. So right, I think I'll let everybody get somebody else to get to now because I've been talking for a while. Oh, okay. All right, uh, Wayne, thank you. I just uh, want to bring up uh, what they've been saying about you on the live chat. Uh, George likes your historical knowledge uh, about tanks. Uh, uh, that's a good mention. Phil says uh, you're definitely the first port of call if you have an armor-related question. So uh, you're, you are certainly the pro uh, that we look to. Uh, if, um, can I just say, I only get, I only just pick up the stuff because I watch uh, I just go read my books and there's something I'm interested in so but I don't know everything there's always somebody who can if I don't know it there's always somebody else who can help out oh, I'm sure if we if you didn't know you know where to look for the answer yeah yeah all right that's uh, all that's important. That's what I tell people. If I don't know the answer, I have the resources to find out for you. And uh, certainly uh, the first resource I look to is uh, the, the community. <laughs> uh, so moving on, I'm making a quick little share uh, on the uh, Facebook community. Uh, hey, 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 it's the monkeys. Nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Bill Schaefer over at the Facebook community, and I, I got to admit, I have not seen this kit built. I know it's a lousy kit, but this guy made it look like a million bucks. Uh, this is a George Barris uh, oh. car. Is that not true? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, oh wow, pretty funky there. Ah, that's a beautiful interior. Look at that. It's even got a rumble seat way back there. Very nice. Uh, nice. Bill, thank you for sharing. Uh, that was actually a very cool uh, uh, build there. Okay, uh, without further ado and with much patience, I present to you, David. Thank you for your patience, David. How you been? Very good. How you guys been? Oh, good. Fine. No, it's been a long time since I've been in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, huh? Yeah. So what's been, what you've been uh, bashing or building? Bashing. Ah. Mm. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Yes. Very, yeah. very, 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 very nice. Excelsior. That's that out there. <laughs> Excelsior. <laughs> Closed off completely. It's got a door on it now. Nice. You guys are gonna like that. Yeah. That. We did the yeah. impulse. It's a different different can of impulse crystal on that. Yeah, it's a rim to so one of my cars. Oh, oh, that is nice. Yeah, I see it now. Oh, that's pretty funny. That's actually pretty cool too. It is, yeah. 
Excelsior or Enterprise B? Yeah, Excelsior, uh, but we can't bash it. I remember the neck. So it's, to me, it looks better without the neck. Oh, right. I see that now, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it actually looks better without the neck. Yeah. There's your workman styles. Uh -huh. Nice. And speaking of Voyager, mine's a, mine's a Bellerophon, but not Voyager, but. Oh, very sweet. Oh, I hope mine looks that good. Bellerophon, didn't it appear in uh, Deep Space Nine episode or something like that? Or... Yeah, but yep. I used up as a photo dish. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. different. Uh -huh. I think it looks better that way. It's nice. There's a few of things I want to do, so I'm putting put cannons, uh, extra cannons up inside of here, like a phase cannon. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Is she, is she wired up or? Huh? Is she wired up for lighting? No, but I do have something that's wired up for lighting. Oh dear, here we go. Yeah, you, you want to stay out of that, uh. I was wishing he'd talk. Oh, different ball of wax. <laughs> oh, nice. 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 Bash up the Falcon, that's something else. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's what I'm doing to the Falcon. Yeah. yeah I have seen uh, variations of the Falcon uh, much like that, yes. Uh, that's the Hasbro one, is it not? No, it's the uh, AMT Turtle. Oh, okay. Still can get those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys yeah, I'd do that. that. I, I'd bash that kit, too. I, I don't, I'm not fond of it, but I would bash it, too. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. I'd, love, guns to on there instead of the fish. I'd love to see one of those pictures floating around um, a couple of months ago. I think it was just to annoy like really hardcore Trekkies, but it was the Millennium Falcon done in like the Constitution class style. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've um, seen that. <laughs> I'd love to see somebody actually make a model of that. That would be amazing. I'm sorry, those two, two things were cut off. But then I got looking at it and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm making them touch. My own. <laughs> Be the fortunate, yeah, be better than the Millennium Falcon. But I got, I know there was somebody did a Falcon, uh, using the Falcon body as the primary hull of a starship. It's only <laughs> oh, reverse, yeah, it was backwards though, and it had the yeah. weapons right here, uh huh. And it was backwards, yeah, that'd be interesting. I saw that, <laughs> I got put together. So I'm not binding you guys. I see you brought one of your biggest fans with you as well. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, he is in he is in a desert portion of New Mexico, uh, so it does get a little warm there. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And that's uh, yeah, that is cool. I'm waiting for my lights to get the rest of my lights to get in so I can do the rest of it. Uh, you know, you can leave the light leaks and make it a ghost ship. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I guess you're right. It does kind of glow. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, it does. Except, but I covered those up. All those openings up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not necessarily the Moon and Falcon. Can, it's kind of like the Falcon if Han Solo had more money to spend on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, I've got the runabout, by the way. Uh, nice. It's kind of sort of over there. Oh, hell with it. I'll show it to you. Yeah. I was yeah. just going to ask if you had any work done on it yet. I'm doing some more or less work to it. Or uh, this stuff. Right. <laughs> I'm doing something like that. Too. Translucent. Rare that's oh, it. Okay. okay. Pearl. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can pick it up. If the camera will pick it up. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh -huh. It does come up a little bit. Yep. Oh. Uh, Gonna look like a lizard. Very cool. 
That is nice. Mine's not going to look as good as that. Oh, yeah, it will. Yes, it will. You realize this is one of the easiest things to light up if you want yeah. light. The, the guys were saying earlier, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, these two things here, and the impulse is back here. And that's just totally your option if you want to light these up in the front there. But I don't light them because I don't think they should be lit. Mm. And I heard they're going yeah. You have to understand, Stephen. It's your build. Yeah, it's your ship. Yep. Your model. Yeah. It's, it's your build. You can do what you want with it. And yeah. I think David here is proving that. Uh, yeah, you can bash a kit, two kits together, like his Excelsior, and is uh, making it look like. Uh, and you thought it was an Enterprise B, but it's a bash of, of all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know, he does yeah, for this ship right here. Some guy over there on the, the one of my other model groups that I'm part of. Mm -hmm. to build Enterprise A and make it like this. They gave me the idea of it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm just yeah. on the Aztec. Sure, Bill. I went on the Aztec decals to come in for that thing, and I'll finish it off. Mm -hmm. She's patiently waiting. And it's the old kit, not the new one. The old one. Right. I think I'm a long way off doing Aztec, finally. <laughs> Well, you know, it's not that it's not that difficult. I think what the difficulty in that is the light touch you would use with either the airbrush, the brush, or however the paint you apply paint. Uh, but the actual masking and stuff like that, that's not that difficult. It's just time consuming. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, it's painting. Uh, you got to have some uh, some background in painting. And uh, it's just a it's an ongoing process. You learn something new from each build and then you progress your way. And as, as you see what uh, Dave is holding up there, uh, didn't know Valspar made that. Valspar is a uh, paint brand uh, from Lowe's. You got that at Lowe's, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. A Lowe's is like a Home Depot here in, uh, in the States. I can see that. You know I've been to the States. This will shoot through, your, this will shoot through, but, uh, shoot through the airbrush quite nice. It's no something. kidding. Yeah. It doesn't need diluted or anything? or. Well, it's practically if you can hear it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's you might need to do it just a little bit, but it's just in my uh, posh talent pretty good. You know what? I'm gonna go uh, uh, build my next car with using that crap or that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I because really? you can make it any color you want, and that's just an uh, that's an overlay on top, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. transparent, translucent. Yeah, yeah translucent, right? It's yeah. basically a trans clear, a trans clear, uh, tra a, a clear, a clear gloss, a clear coat. Oh, it's yeah. a glaze. Uh, it's a translucent glaze. Uh, yeah. It's pearlescent. That's actually a good idea. That'll make it a lot easier instead of getting the pearlescent paints themselves. Although, although um, um, testers, their model master at brand makes them too, don't they? Yes, but this stuff, the, the thicker you put it on, the, the more it becomes, you know, apparent. I mean, it's not clear anymore. I have, a newbie, I, have, I have a newbie question. Okay. What does that do? What? Pearlescent? The, the bottle of stuff that you were showing us? Is it yes. literally just like a lacquer of some kind? or? No, it's a glaze. It's what like does it do? Coat. Make it make it shiny? It's like a clear coat. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Okay. Um, yeah. Jack, I'm going to get to bed now. It's about half one in the morning over here. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. I mean, it, it, it does shoot to my posh talent. Good night. Pretty, so. Good night. Good morning. Morning, Mike. Good morning. morning. <laughs> I should probably go. I should probably go soon too, as well. To be honest, it's same time here. It's like. Uh, it's nearly 20 to 2, and I'm up for work at 6. So I won't go just yet, but soon. <laughs> my, brother wanted right. to do, my brother wanted me to do that with this uh, Falcon thing I've got going on over here. He wanted me to put that, that iridescent glaze on it. And I was like, I don't know about that shit. Dude. <laughs> I just told him, I said, I don't really think it would be good on that ship. Now, if you're doing it like a Starship Defiant, if you're doing a sister ship with a Defiant, yeah, fine, by all means. How about doing a car like I was thinking of? Uh, what these you do it, yeah. If you, the thinner you put it on, or the thinner you get it down, yeah, it'll go on the car pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, Mike said. Mike Morgan said, uh, "Try to got to try that one, uh, David." Um, I've got two bottles of stuff. Two bottles. <laughs> same size, too, dude. The same size. I've got two of these damn things. I wonder what Velspar um, is thinking uh, of that product uh, when they, when, you know, what are they, what are they thinking of people using it for? I mean, this is the other thing I use, and this goes through your airbrush pretty good. I switched over from blue to acrylics, by the way. Right, so, uh, so much easier to do acrylics. Yeah, and I shoot this through my airbrush, and I can also mix it. You can mix it, then it, you know, I've got a bunch of this stuff. All right. But yeah, uh, Bob, Bob, Bob uh, Busking is on break at work. He's at work and he's uh, tuned in. Now, thanks for joining us for the short time you got there, Bob. Um, anything else you got there, David? Nothing much, really. All right. Uh, well, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you. Oh, sh shoot. It's been at least uh, a handful of shows, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so good to see you're doing live and well and uh, doing your bash builds. It's always fun to see what you got going on. I got uh, it. You have an eye for it. I, I, dude, you have an eye for it because I've seen bash builds that are pretty horrific looking. But you, you seem to make sense of it all. Uh, Jack. I got yes, some money to show you. I okay. got some money to show you guys. You're going to probably hate me after this, but okay. You ready? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh. <laughs> you need to build a bigger boat. <laughs> you need to build a bigger house. Yeah. <laughs> I take it that's the Hasbro yeah. one again. Yeah, yeah. My brother shit about to his pants when he found out about that. <laughs> he saw that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's he goes. That's one heck of a falcon right there. You, you, you know, um, it's good to know that us modelers don't have a problem with size. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stephen. Yo, I was just gonna say, show me the defined. Nice, very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. She's not done yet. That's, a, that's, that's another cool. build one. That's an other one that's easy to light too. Yeah, there ain't much to it, dude. There's well, not much to that. The only part we're gonna have problems with is, is this: if you're gonna go for studio accuracy, it lights up in the center instead of just having light go out of it. Oh, trying to block it all off. Yeah. Which I, which what I've got in this Falcon right here might help you guys. I don't know if you. Yeah, I'll show you. Those little lights right there. Mm hmm. Those things are pretty bright, and you can. They're, they're on metal. Oh, wow. They're, they're itty bitty, and they're on three volts. Oh, oh wow. wow. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> and, they put light, and they put out all that light and then so. Yeah. Um,. You know, we don't have a problem with size, but George says it's model or is envied is what we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to do that. Yeah. Oh, I got to yeah. try one of those. I got to put some glue to that. It's not the size of the model. It's how you build it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a story about the I, that I, have, I got that falcon from a friend of mine who was going to try to do that. I don't know what the hell he did, was doing with it, but he gave it to me and said, he asked me if I wanted it. And I said, shit, yeah, I want it. Yeah. Yeah, and I of took course. It, and I took it and I brought it home. I started work doing a little bit of work on it. He had the ramp cut open on it and he sealed it short with epoxy. He was, I guess he was going to put it in landing mode and decided not to, but you seen the bell huge hole in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. He had that chewed out for a display base. And mm -hmm. I was, by the way, 
how are you coming on your falcon if you finished it already um i'm going to i'm i uh, the the uh, burners are just driving me nuts uh i i'm going to get i bought another one so that i can uh, cast uh mold. i can't find the burners anywhere that i'm satisfied with so i'm going to cast the mold for uh the burners in the new from the new kit and see and go from there um i kind of got overzealous with the lighting uh i made a lot of mistakes uh along the way i've tried two different ways of doing it and the way i did it's just not going to handle a third way of doing it if i really try hard enough i can probably make it work but no i'm gonna have to cast new burners and and go from there i'm not satisfied with uh lighting the back up with what like you did i mean you did that three volt thing which is really smart really good to do uh if you want a really quick and easy way of lighting all those burners but you're bashing you're doing a different kind of build but what I wanted to do was each of the individual burners have an individual LED. So when you look at it, you'll need you to see all those glasses. Lights. You, you need yeah. eclipse glasses to see it. I mean, because I want it that bright. I want it to be blinding. Uh, well, that's because that's the impression I get off the movies, you know? Yeah. Mm. So that's that's what I'm I, that's what I want to do. And uh, by golly, I'm stubborn and I'm going to do it. I'm not going to make the deadline next month for sure. For sure, I'm not going to make the deadline. But during the 48 hour hangout, I hope to at least have a Lumalite uh, kit of both the silicone and the resin. And then I, I'll be doing uh, the molding uh, of that. And uh, Jim has some things to show about that uh, currently. Uh, so we're going to get to him momentarily. So is that everything uh, you got there, Dave? That's everything, dude. All right, very cool. Hey, thank you so much for uh, sharing. And, uh, okay, Jim, boy, you've been waiting like an hour and a half. <laughs> Sorry, just, just well, I'm enjoying just, myself. It's, it's okay. Yes, sir, Steve. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, it's, it's like... <laughs> Uh, quarter to two a.m. here. I'm up for work at like six a.m. I'm gonna bow out, but thanks for having me, guys. Okay. Oh, sure. And see the reruns of what we got left uh, going on here. The, thanks for your uh, patronage and your showing up, Stephen. And uh, hope to see you soon again. Will do. Thanks, guys. See you later. Take care, Steve. Right, Steve. Bye. God, I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> 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 yeah, I feel about virgins. <laughs> you do realize you will see the rerun of this show. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, good. anyhow, go Jack. Way to go, Jack. You just run him off. Well, you know what? If I run a virgin off and they come back, I know they enjoyed the, what I had to offer them. So, anyway. <laughs> uh go on jim uh, the frame is on okay. you all right well thank you yeah from uh from what we did yesterday i got a bit more done actually i'm about as far as i can get right now till hang on let's bring up here Doink. all right this is where i left off yesterday mm. And okay. Uh, you, what you're doing there is you're building a compartment. The part is in the middle yeah, there. Yeah, the compartment, the building, building the, the frame, the casting frame, and that out of Lego. And uh, it's built this way deliberately to make it easier to come apart. So it's only got one locking brick to hold it in place. And the next trick is to take some uh, plasticine, low sulfur pl plasticine, roll it flat to about uh, a centimeter thickness. Your minimum distance between your model and the edge of the cast uh, edge of your casting is a quarter of an inch. So if I make it a centimeter thick, it's easy to do with. So roll it flat i put the frame on top of it to mark where the opening was and then uh, cut it out so that's the insert to go into the bottom of the frame nice mm. the flash thing so then that is inserted into the frame into the bottom and then just with your finger to make sure it it's evenly all out to the edges 
concealed against the walls of the frame. F from that, you then take your uh, you can then t take your glue gun and seal the unit onto your casting plate. Now, for casting, I'm using a a marble cheese plate, which you know I got fairly cheap. But you'd have to be something hard and flat and, and shiny. You could use a polished uh, ceramic uh, tile, a uh, piece of glass, whichever and that. But it, it needs to be shiny and flat for your casting surface. If you use anything that's not flat, your casting is going to stick to it and you're going to have a mess. So seal it up. Then insert your piece in whatever orientation you require, and then shove it into the uh, plasticine so it's about halfway through into the plasticine. And then the next thing is you have to put breather holes in any area where you think that it's you could get air bubbles when you start doing the actual casting. So anywhere you think it's going to trap air use a toothpick and place a toothpick there to give a breathe hole. So it gives you a breathing vent as well as you need your your filling tunnel for your resin when you're when you're done. Okay. Then, once you're this far, then you need to coat it with your mold release. So you spray your mold release on and let it dry. It has to be fully dry before you can put your casting material on. It's more like a uh, Teflon if it dries. It's more like a Teflon thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a no-stick surface and that, that goes yeah, in. Yeah, it's not oily. No. You don't you don't have to put the non-stick stuff on first before you put your the piece you're molding in, or pardon? You have to put that on before yeah. you have to put that in before you're putting the rubber in. Oh yeah, before I put the rubber. Before yeah. that, because you don't want it to stick to your model piece or to the plasticine. Mm. Yeah. If you don't, it can stick. It makes it a real pain to clean the uh, rubber casting off after your when you before you put the. When you're in this place, I'm doing a two-part mold, so mm -hmm. you have to make sure it's clean before you do the second part. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing is for the volume, measure the volume of how much material you're going to need for it. Again, with the rule is it need about a, you know, a, qu a quarter of an inch or a centimeter above your model for the amount of material for your first piece of the uh, rubber mold. Uh, it's easier if you measure, if it's a square one like this, it's easy enough to measure it with your scale in metric rather than inch because you make a cubic centimeter equals one milliliter and it's easy to transfer over to volume measure. Uh, but a one trick, uh, once you got that level, the other way you can find a volume is, especially if it's an unusual shape you're using for a frame, uh, you can use rice, and at this stage, you can oh, pour yes. rice into there and then measure the volume of the rice. Yes. So that's another method of getting your volume. Yeah. You don't need to get actual numbers like you're showing there on the right. All you just need is the uh, correct volume. So You need the volume, yes. and because this is a two-part material, you measure your volume, then cut it, and then, then in half it, and then that's the amount of material you need for your A and your B. Right, okay. right. So, like this material I'm using here is one to one in both, both uh, if you're doing it by volume or by weight, it's still one to one. Some materials, because their A and a B might be different viscosities and mass, you might have a different ratio for weight as opposed to the ratio for volume. So. Oh. That, that comes a little important here for what I was doing. I was originally just going to go for volume. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, what I get to here. So you measure the amount, put the amount of water you need for your, let's say your A material, 
in your measuring cup, then pour it into your your mixing cup. Okay, mm -hmm. then mark the water level with a marker on the outside. So that gives you reference. Pour out the water, dry out the cup because you don't want water in with the material. Dry out your cup now, and then do your do the same thing for your B measure. Uh, once you got those both done, then you can get ready to, then you can start get mixing first your A model. Now, uh, one thing I was originally just going to do for volume, but what I ran into is because the, de the viscosity of this stuff was so thick that it was took a while before it leveled out to where the marker was. So basically I put enough stuff, enough material in so that it, when it leveled out, it was just above my uh, level mark. Mm -hmm. Then weighed it on my scale. Mm -hmm. That gave me, Then I just took the second cup, put the second cup on my scale, and just start filling it with the B material until my weight was the same. Mm -hmm. It made it a lot easier than trying to do the volume thing once I got the, up to this. So then to mix them up. You've got an hour to work with the uh, mold with this rubber, so mix it up. You got to make sure that the colors are all mixed together. It's well, part A is white, part B is blue, so you got to make sure it's a constant blue blue color. It's so not marble. That. So it's, it's not, not modely. No, it's got to be all constant blue. Yeah. So that it's all. I mean, it includes scraping the sides. Make sure you got everything up from the bottom and the sides in the cup. And then pour, start pouring it into your mold from a corner. Well, actually, what you should do is one thing is for, what you should do first is check your mold. If there's any area on the mold that you think has got detail or detail, especially detail that might hold air while you're pouring the rubber in, get an old brush that you're going to throw away and paint the rubber on that area. Mm -hmm. So what they call surface casting. So... So you can do the surface on those those areas you think might trap air. And mm -hmm. then start pouring your material in from an open corner. Not in the middle of your material your model, but on the edge and one corner of the uh, of the of the casting block. And then just pouring it in and let it flow all the way across the model. That way you won't get you got less amount you won't get you'll get no air trapped in the material or or anywhere, so it reduces the amount of air bubbles coming in. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're making a two-part mod uh, mold, uh, you can use keys. In other words, like an acorn nut to uh, make the two sides align with each other. Or the yeah. end of a paintbrush, or the end of a paintbrush into the plaster scene, or anything else, just to make a, a hole or an indent. You can use right. acorn nuts. You can use any anything actually. If you're doing team. an indent like that, is uh, what I've seen on videos is if you're doing an indent like that, they refer to pouring it on the side, not on the model on the side. They refer to it as the lowest part of your mold. So yeah. if you're doing an indent, pour it into the indent and then let the silicone flow over. And that's what you're yeah. saying is that it'll, it'll kill the bubbles. Yeah. Okay, cool. So once we're out there, we filled all up and... Then you need to tap it to get any residual air out of the out, out of the material. Now, what I did, I found this this trick online is to use your air compressor. Use because it vibrates when it's on. Turn on your air compressor and set your model on your air compressor, and let it agitate. And that's made it actually work quite well. Seeing a lot of the bubbles come right up to the surface right away. So mm -hmm. it's a good way other than just tapping on the, your desk with it. Yeah. So it's a good quick way to get it up and then set it down and set it aside because it's it's uh, 24 hours for this to fully cure. Yeah. So, we'll so, see you <laughs> so that's right. I'm now, another thing you have to remember with that, because this stuff can be irritating to the skin and you don't want to get in your eyes make sure you're wearing your your rubber gloves and wearing your safety glasses when you're working with this material mm -hmm. 
don't need to be accidentally rubbing your eyes and getting something on you from your hands on and stuff into your eyes and stuff like that. So that's just a bit of a safety tip that way. Okay. So that's basically where I'm at right now. Right now. Okay. okay. Now, and the other thing oh. I did, I didn't think I have, I don't know if there's any questions. Are there any questions in the uh, chat or anything? No, but uh, the, there are some people, I put it up. The material that you have on the bottom of that mold. Plasticine. Plasticine. You know, uh, like you used to play to when you were kids and played the... the Play-Doh. No, not, well, not Play-Doh, Play but, but actual plasticine. Yeah. Yeah. I've they heard... Be, uh, the, 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 the low sulfur. Low sulfur. It's got to be low sulfur. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, silly putty is, is low sulfur. Yeah, but you can't use silly puffer. Silly puffy. So you can't use silly putty for this. You have to use plastic. It's more rigid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there is also uh, clay. Uh, that's uh, a no sulfur clay. Um, you can, yeah, you could use molding clay, um, as long as it's not air dry or baking clay. You could use molding clay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, molding clay. It's very particular. You just can't. It's not the clay that you would throw on a potting wheel and make pots out of. It is. It's something very particular. Mm -hmm. No, it would no, actually. Play, you, it would. It would be the same one that like, you could mold if you were molding a figurine or something like that. You could use that right. same clay, that same type of artistic clay. Uh, Joe McCaslin says he normally uses modeling clay. Which yeah, I, I have kind of a, like I, I bought some modeling clay. Crayola makes like these strips of modeling clay. This is modeling clay. This is okay yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, you could get this warmed up. It becomes a little more pliable. Make your millimeter or centimeter. Uh, yeah, which is probably that's probably just plasticine. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Cool. All right. Very good. <laughs> good to know. Um. Yeah, okay. I, I guess I can uh, actually mold my pieces then, too, for uh, yeah. during a 48-hour hangout. Yeah. Yep. Cool. That's so what I'm going to do that. during a 48-hour hangout in my yeah. bleary eye. Yeah. When is the 48-hour hangout going to be? What's that? When is, is the 48-hour hangout, he was asking. Oh, uh, coming up on Friday, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern. That makes it 6 a.m. Uh, for uh, New Mexico time, Mountain Time, uh, on Friday. All right. That's when it starts. So we'll be right there. <laughs> you don't have to be right there. You can take your time and, you know, be whenever you can make it. Uh, okay. Go ahead, James. Okay. Uh, the only thing is, is I know I've got a lot of textbooks anyways, but I wanted to upgrade to something new, get some new material. And I picked this up in the bookstore today. Ah, yes. For it's inventors. a nice, thick yeah. one. Yeah. Mm. Nice thick one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like uh, you know, I'm not going to do because we're, we, we're already on air for two hours. I think I'm going to save my electronics tutorial later uh, okay. because everybody was just, again, just like yesterday, everybody was so, so you know, so full of information and, and show and tell and, and stuff. Uh, but I will uh, do it the next time in a couple of weeks. Uh, so you're good, Jim? I'm good. All right. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, or criticism, send them over to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can still comment on the uh, video. Uh, and if it's uh, directed at him, uh, he'll probably see it because he, he has access uh, to YouTube. So um, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, uh, do uh, do ask uh, about that. He went through it pretty quick. But it's pretty simple, though, Jim, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's it's pretty simple. It, uh, you take your time, though, but you need to really, you know, make sure you've studied. Like I spent the last two weeks pretty well studying up everything I could to find out about the casting and all the little idioms because this is really the first time I've ever cast anything. So it's a bit of a learning curve on that that end to want to make sure I was doing everything right. So. Uh, so. 
<laughs> I'm just making a comment on the live chat there because uh, they're saying it was a good show. I thought it was a good show. Yeah. Huh? That was a good show. I'm sorry, Dave. Oh, I said it was. I thought it was a good show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I particularly liked uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, if you guys think I, I don't like the guy, that's not true. <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's a it's a tradition here at uh, Amazing Scale Modelers so is that if you're I'm a newbie so and you leave first, we say we don't like you. Glad he's gone, <laughs> but we we uh, we like him. So don't think that we don't. We do. Nothing. It's just what we say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who participated, Heath and Wayne that were with us, as well as Stephen, uh, uh, departed, uh, was here, had parted from us uh, early, because, hey, they're on the other side of the planet. It's uh, 9, uh, 9, uh, 9 o'clock here, e Eastern time, so. Yeah. And Randall, Randall's just retired. He can stay up as late as he wants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So he's probably three in the morning. They're coming up on, and uh, he sleeps during the day. His, hey, hey his, you know, his wife lets him. <laughs> so why not? So thank you for those uh, participants as well as David, Dave, and uh, uh, Jim. Uh, thanks for uh, both of you for stopping by, showing the bash builds and the and the silicone uh, stuff. Uh, we're, I'll be trying that out over the forty-eight hour hangout starting. Uh, this Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to plug it, plug it, plug it, because I want people to show up, show up, show up, and say hello. Um, there will not be a live chat on this because it's not a broadcast hangout. So, George, this is directed to you. Um, I don't know how you're going to participate, but uh, certainly, um, yeah, that's uh, AY Tube and uh, AY Tube YouTube. Uh, Canada, yeah, I think so. Uh, but certainly, uh, do show up if you can and say hello. And thank you, Randall, for also stopping by and sharing. Did you share? Mm -hmm. I did. It's been such a long show. I'm not yeah. sure if we shared with you. Did we? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 you did. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Talking about my uh, yeah wildcats. And... I must have been busy because if you look nice and close, there's a lot of gray there. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> i'm catching up to you guys uh so and everybody in the community especially thank you for posting building and posting and building and posting and building um uh, google plus and as well as facebook you guys are freaking awesome uh this community is about its members it's not about jack it's not about this show it's about you guys and you guys have been certainly taking advantage of it and thank you uh, been learning a lot, seeing a lot, and having some great ideas. And of course, I got to thank George, uh, George, my guy over in the live chat. And Mike uh, has also been over at the live chat, Joe McCaslin as well. And there's been Mr. Vistec Productions. Uh, thank you for stopping by and participating in the live chat. Bob stopped by during his break. And uh, also uh, Dirk, uh, one of our monitors over, moderators over at uh, the Facebook community, stopped by too. Phil, uh, thank you for participating. Of course, you're probably Betty Buys by now. You're also in the UK. And did I get everybody... I, I think, oh, Ken Skiffington, he's a, uh, <laughs> he's a Canadian and uh, up in the uh, Maritimes. And also, that would be it. Uh, thank you all for stopping by and participating and uh, trading ideas, comments, and they were having a good time over there. Uh, so if you're watching this uh, in rerun, uh, join us live because the live chat is a lot of fun too because it's a whole different world over there they 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 say what they need to say and they say it quickly uh but yeah thank you for all of your participations and uh next year is going to be a pretty big year too with this community i feel it in my bones and uh yeah until two weeks from tonight uh, there's going to be the sunday hangout two weeks from yesterday that would be the across the pond hangout that will be the weekend after thanksgiving that is the second uh, yeah, the 2nd and 3rd of December will be the next broadcast. Uh, so join us then for another episode. And until then, happy modeling, everyone. Have a good day. Good night.